Today's class is going to be a short Bible study, less than 25 minutes or more. But it will be a short class, not too long. Then after that, we will have time to ask questions, discuss, um, whatever question, either from the book of Joshua that we have been studying or uh, the last class we had last week. Whichever, the Spirit of God is here to help us answer these questions. It's like the speed of uh, the speed of Joshua is becoming is becoming too fast, <laughs> so <laughs> we have to take it easy, right? And um, and interrogate the word of God. But before we go into today's class, let us pray. Oh Lord, we know you know all things, and we are in your plan. We are in your sovereign plan. You know us more than we know ourselves. You know what we need for time. I will trust because you always lead and direct us. From the book we are studying, we saw a scenario in the book of Joshua chapter 10. Even starting from chapter 9, it, it looked like it's part of control. It looked like the Gibeonites are actually, were actually working for the devil. But no, Lord, we saw that you are actually in control. You are actually working towards those whose heart is fearful towards you. So Lord, we have seen your sovereign hand. We've seen your sovereign heart. We know when you are working. We know that we have our lives in your hands and you know what we need by time. We thank you because today's Bible study is that which we need today. And we ask the Lord that you teach us in your own way. This we pray for, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Actually, today's Bible study, we were to go to chapter 11, but there was a miscommunication. We couldn't go to chapter 11. So we have next week, by God's grace, next week, Saturday, we will go to chapter 11. Now, this work suddenly dropped on my lap in the last five, ten minutes. I'm not supposed to be teaching today. We're supposed to be in chapter 11. In the last seven minutes, I became the teacher for today. So what will I say? <laughs> so look at what I'm about to teach now is what came to, what is, is what I just know. It's not coming to my mind in the last seven minutes, but I just got to know that I'll be teaching in the last seven minutes. And the way I like to teach, I like to spend days. I like to spend time. I like to read and read and read. But this one, I'm not spending days. I'm not spending hours. But then there's something I missed in chapter 10 which is very important. And that's what I want, to, I want to discuss in the few minutes we have, then we'll be, the flow will be open for discussion, either in the book of Joshua that we have studied so far, anywhere in the book of Joshua, ask question or make a comment, or based on uh, the teaching we had last week, ask any question, anywhere. Because if I don't know the answer, Brairo can tell me the answer. If Brairo doesn't know the answer, Sister Comfort is there, yeah. above or Baba is here, then, the Spirit of God is with us. So there's something I missed in chapter 10. I want us to look at it as we go, as we look at it again today. Joshua chapter 10, verse 6. Just verse 6. I want us to read just verse 6. I will read it and just look at it. Just one verse. And the men of Gibeon sent to Joshua at the camp at Gilgal, saying, do not forsake your servants. Come up to us quickly. Save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites who dwell in the mountains have gathered together against us. Just one verse. I want us to look at just one verse. Maybe verses six and seven, just two verses. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal and he and all the people of war with him and all the mighty men of Valor. Two verses. There was no way I would have inter, uh, I would have inf infused this verse into uh, the last time I taught because that would make it that would make the class to be too long. But I want us to look at it again today. Who were the Gibeonites? The Gibeonites were the occupants of the land of Canaan. Who were Part of the people that should have been obliterated, they practiced sorcery, they practiced witchcraft, they practiced 
They burned their daughters to Molech. They practiced soothsaying. They interpreted omen. You find that in Deuteronomy 18, 9 and 10. But in this case, they cried to Joshua, and Joshua rose up immediately to help them. I want to ask a question. How do they qualify to be helped by Joshua? They didn't practice Passover. They didn't practice atonement. They didn't practice circumcision. Yet they were helped. Do you know why? I mean, we saw Joshua and his people in chapter 7, right? They repented. The chapter, chapter 5, there was Passover. They were in Giga, Holy Land. They ate the Passover meal. They did their circumcision. The Lord appeared to Joshua in chapter 5, that you are on holy ground. We see that. They were baptized in Jordan. But the Gibeonites did not do any of that. And yet they were kept. No, why? Okay. Go ahead. Uh, right, sir. You see, you, what you are saying, because when you look at that, who said there is no gospel in the Old Testament? What were we? We were, we were dead in our sins. He give you another word. But as many that call upon the name of the Lord, you see, look at that verse. What were they doing? They were asking for help. They knew they couldn't. They understood they couldn't. And they cry. See, don't think that they cry to Joshua. They were not crying to Joshua at all. They were crying to the power behind Joshua. I need you to look at this very well. They were not crying. And that is grace. By grace, you have been saved. When you don't look at it that way, that if you, if you think that they are crying to Joshua, they're not contrary to Joshua. Joshua himself couldn't even have done it if it was not for God. So we need to really, really understand. Look at it. Say, do not forsake us. This is, this is, you see, when you hear the gospel, when you hear the gospel and you look at God, I'm not saying the one that they call us together in, in church and say, come and say after me. No, you look at, you will realize yourself that I am deep in sin. And you cry to God. Verse 7, we read the answer. Because God, we deliver us from the kingdom of darkness. That is the time when we cry unto him. By, he said, faith comes by hearing. These people, they have heard, they have understood that there is a power behind Joshua. It's not Joshua they are looking at. They are looking just like Ruth. He has come under the wing of the God of Israel. Just in fact, uh, uh, my brother, can you open... Uh, Second King, chapter five and verse uh, twelve and thirteen. Please, you see, sometimes he does uh, pictures this way, and it's very good. Uh, I, I don't know what he was thinking. though. we never spoke about this. I don't know what he was thinking. Maybe thinking of something else. But let me just say my own and leave. So okay, chapter five, five. and uh, uh, twelve and thirteen. Twelve and thirteen. Okay. Second Kings. And not the and not the Abana and the yeah. is that is that the same place? Yes, go, and go, the, go, 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 And the far and the far far, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel. Could I, I not need, wash them? I need the, the last field. phrase in that verse uh, 12, the last but go on. So, so everybody knows that and last went phrase. in range. And a servant came near and spoke to him and Amen. said, My father, if the prophet had told you do some, to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean? Look at that man. I read the, the last phrase is that he turned and went away in rage. That is, he was rejecting God's 
this is this was Neman, the, the, the leprous man. He was rejecting God's offer. What is God's offer? The gift of God. The gift of God is a, a, a is eternal life through Christ. That's the gift of God. He was rejecting that and he went away in rage. But grace overtook him. Verse 13, sir. Verse 13. Verse 13 says, and his servant came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean? 14. 14. So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. My, my brothers and sisters, any time any sinner recognizes, mm. see, when, when the grace was there, the grace came, the sinner recognizes, ah, I'm a sinner, I'm going to do this. God's, what God says, look at Naaman here. He was made clean. Look at the Gibeonites in Joshua, in Joshua chapter 10. God delivered them because they went to the right source. That's my own contribution. <laughs> so you see why I said that uh, God is a sovereign God. He knows what we need to emphasize at, the, at a point like this, that like the story of the Gibeonite, the, the, the message there is similar to that of Naaman. There's no one that comes to God that God will not save. Him. There's no Because Jesus made us know that in John chapter 6, John chapter 6, I think it's verses 36 or so. Once I get that, I'll see it. John chapter 6, that's, that's so verses 39. Or let's start from verse 38. Or yeah, it's 36, I'm correct. But I say to you that you have, I said to you that you have seen me and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one, the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will. But the will of him who sent me. Are you still with me? Okay, I can. Something is wrong with my system. I can't see anybody again. Uh, we can see you. We are hearing you. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Let me see if I can fix it. Okay, I'm here again. So, verses 4 39. This is the will of, of the Father who sent me, that all who he has given me, I should not, I should lose nothing but she will raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So there's no one that comes to Jesus that will not be saved. But how can they come to Jesus except the Father has given them to Jesus? So we see, the, we see this in the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 10 that I'm looking at, just one, one verse, just one verse. And the Gibeonite came to Joshua. At the beginning of this series, we, I, I did that connection. Joshua, the Lord saves. So in this historical document, there's a, a greater significant significance. As we look at this historical document, it's pointing at the gospel. So the Gibeonite came to the Lord saves. Joshua, the Lord saves. And the Lord saves saved them. But why would the Lord save save them? They didn't practice atonement. They didn't practice Passover. They didn't do circumcision. Why? We saw that last in chapter 9. In chapter 9, verses 16. Or chapter 9, verses 15. So Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them. See? Because of the covenant. See? This covenant in the Old Testament is called Ase. Ase means covenanted love. There's a difference between contractual love and covenanted love. In contractual, when you say something is a contract, if you have a contract with the people that cut your lawn, or you have a contract with a gym, 
you sign a contract. The day you stop paying, the contract is over. Even marriage, physical marriage, a husband and a wife, we go to the registry to contractualize the marriage. And if they choose to walk away, they will break it again, the same law, the same law, the same court. That's contractual love. But the kind of love God has for the people who has come to him is not contractual, it's covenanted. The difference between covenanted and contractual is that covenanted love does not require you to perform. So the Gibeonite does not have to perform for them to be saved. Just believe. That's, contract, that's covenanted love, not contractual love. And that's the love that God has for the Gentiles, you and I. It's not based on the atonement or circumcision. And that's why this January, you can't do first fruit. Because we are not under a contractual love with God. We are under a covenant. In fact, you know we are not in a covenant with God. I missed that the last time I taught it. I taught this class. We are not in covenant with God. It was Abraham that was in covenant with God. We are product of the covenant. Act, it should be in Acts chapter, chapter 2 or where is the Act 1 or 2? Please check it for me. Acts 2. Peter spoke about Abraham had covenant with God. Acts 2. We are not in covenant. Because when we say, who are you to have, covenant, have a covenant with God? We are a product of the covenant. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. I don't know where, I don't know the verse. But there's okay. a place in either Act 1 or Act 2. It should be in Act 2. Yeah, act two, somewhere in Act 2.22, when Peter was given um, in the, his message on the day of Pentecost, somewhere there, you find that Abraham was, but well, we are product of the covenant. So find it, if you find it, let me know. Okay. Why will Joshua <laughs> rise up to save the Gibeonite? Because they are not, they are in a covenanted love and in covenant and love we don't the other we don't need to perform for that love to stand so you will find that in chapter 9 verses 16 joshua had made a covenant with the gibeonites so when it was time for that for joshua to stand for them they don't need to perform because the kind of love that is covenanted does not need you to perform and that is describing who we are in Christ Jesus. That's why Second Timothy will say, even when you were unfaithful, he is still faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Second Timothy 2, I think. Second Timothy 2, 7 to 9. Even when we are unfaithful, he remains faithful. Now, people will say, sir, when you say things like this, you give people license to live the way they want to live. But no. When we hear the gospel, it gives us motivation to love God the more. Paul said that in Romans, Romans 12, Romans 12, verses 1. See, people of the world don't understand gospel language. Uh, when I was in the U.S., I was going to a, a CAC church. The pastor said, you know, why they don't teach like this in CAC is that it will make people to want to live in sin because they don't know God. If they know God, you will let God be. Let God do his work and don't do God's work for him. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that to present your bodies a living sacrifice, only acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. I'll just stop on back. <laughs> it said, I beseech you, brother, to present your body a living sacrifice, which is, I, I can't see you again. But it, I know you can hear me, but I can't see you. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, nice. I see you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body. A, so the end goal is that we present our body <coughs> a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. That is the end goal. But how is that going to happen? I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, when we say mercies of God, it's still the same thing. In the Old Testament, it's called Hase, covenanted love of God. The more of the gospel we know, 
The more, that is where the motivation comes to present our body a living sacrifice, to present our body only, and to present our body acceptable to God. It is the more of the gospel that floods our heart. I say, mercy. Mercy. The more of the, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, not just mercy. See, this is a, it's a this is an Hebrew way of writing. When they want to say something in plural, in many form, they put it. When they put something in plural, they're talking about quantities, a lot of it, mercies, blessings, by the mercies of God. In other words, by what God has done for us in Christ Jesus, the more of it we allow to flood our heart. That is where the motivation to live a holy life is going to come from. But you know what the religious people say? Is, Don't tell people what God has done for them. Because when you tell them what God, what God has done for them, it will make them to live a reward life. But the scripture says, tell them what the Lord has done. That is the motivation to live in an acceptable life before God. Who do we believe? The word or God? So the Gibeonites came to Joshua and Joshua did not say they should go circumcise before he rise up to defend them. True? He didn't say they should go wash themselves. Covenanted love is not contractual. It doesn't need you to perform. It, per it performs on its own. So because of covenanted love, which is mercy, which is assay, Joshua rose up and the Gibeonites were saved. When we say this, people say, you give people license to sin. It's because they don't know God. When you know God, you tell the people of God the truth of God. Paul said, I beseech you, dreadful brethren, by the mercies of God, which means the more of what God has done, that's where our strength comes from. I pray that as we journey in this work of faith, we will keep flooding our hearts with what Christ has done. This is why Bible-centered teaching is very important. Good fellowship, good church, or any avenue whereby we can flood our heart with the word of God. If you see any man or woman who has done great things for God, anyone in history, dead or alive, who you know, whom you know, has done great things, they are not they are not greater than you and I. It's just that they have a good understanding of what God has done for them in Christ Jesus. That is where that strength comes from. We must continue to feed our mind our spirit with what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. And that essentially is what the epistle is all about. It's all the same. It's all the same. Philippian, Colossian, Ephesians, Colossian, Philippian, Philemon. The same. The first seven verses, first chapter, first seven verses are all the same. The entire summary, the same. In Ephesians, you see be filled with the Spirit. In Colossians, you see being filled with the Word of God. The same. They didn't say anything different because that is what we need, we must flood our heart with what Christ has, with what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. Baba quoted the scripture yesterday, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. God's power, let me stop there, then we'll discuss. Let me stop with what Baba quoted yesterday. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord. He has his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Now, people said, don't tell people what God has done because they will live with what. But the scripture says, you know what God has done. That's where the strength comes from. God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. All through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. He's given us everything. So these people who are hiding God's truth from God's people are, where, are actually not working for God. God has done everything through the knowledge of him. So let's spend our time. Let's create that time. Let's invest into things that will enable us to, to know more about what God has done for us. John said, First John said, I am writing this to you that you may know that you have eternal life. Where is that? John, first John 3. 
First John 5.13. First John 5.13. I was looking at 3.13. Now, First John 5.13 says, These things I have written. But they said, no, don't tell them what has been written because mm. they don't know what life. But no, Paul said it, Peter said it, John said it. I go by them. These things I have written, that these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know present position, that you have eternal life, present position, and present possession. These things I have written to you that you may know present position, that you have eternal life, present possession. All comes from knowing. So you want to know your present position. It comes from the knowledge of the word of God. You want to know your present possession. It still comes from the word of God. So we cannot overemphasize this. We need to know. What the Lord has done for us. We need to keep knowing because they won't we'll keep forgetting, right? So keep flooding your heart with what the Lord, which is very simple. Pick the word of God and read, and you will know what the Lord has done for us in Christ Jesus. For Lord, we have come today for this short time to refresh our mind in the truth of your word. There's no other source of information where we can know what you have done for us except in the word of God, in your word. And the more of this we know, the more we become like Christ. Second Corinthians 3, 18, as we behold him in the mirror, we are changed from glory to glory. We pray our Lord Jesus, you continue to give us the grace to behold the mirror of your word, to keep looking at your word. And as we keep looking at your word, we pray that you give us that grace to be transformed from level of glory to glory until that day when we see you face to face, when we will not look at you faintly like in a glass, but we'll see you as you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's going to be a short Bible class. And at this point, I can ask any question, either from the previous Joshua or from the last class we had on false teaching, um, mysticism, word of faith, paganism, any question. And we trust that the Spirit of God will help us today. So the floor is open. Yes, can I start? Go ahead, sir. Yeah, it was a good teaching. I missed it, and uh, I've not read, I've listened to the, the, the teaching, but I've not really taken time to really study. Um, uh, when I, the, the summary of it all is that, uh, as we saw in Joshua chapter 10, that there is no man that can command as Joshua did again, that one is very clear to me. Um, now, <clears throat> concerning exercising Christian authority, like um, you go somewhere and they tell you that demons come and disturb here, then you say that, okay, from today, those demons will not come again. Is it... Um, are you wrong in saying so? Uh, uh, let me put it that that portion in the in the scripture, I think it was it in Mark, uh, where Jesus said that uh, nobody will eat fruit from you again today. When Jesus talked to that uh, to that fig tree, nobody will eat from you again. Can can we today? exercise our Christian authority like Jesus did. Okay. Let me stop there. I know, Baba, we had something, but let me start. So you don't need to change to the fig tree because the fig tree and the demon, you are talking about two different things. So the fig tree, that's Mark 11 or Mark 10 and Mark 11. We'll look at that. But let's, but let's talk about the okay, Mark 11. So let's talk about the demon first. That authority, that word you use, authority, came from a book written by Kenneth E. again, The Believer's Authority. And the way he explained The Believer's Authority is that, um, say, a policeman 
no matter how small he or she may look like, the moment the policeman wears a uniform in the authority of the police, he can stop a moving trailer. So he's exercising his authority, even though he's small, he can yeah, stop yeah. something big. Isn't it? Because it is small, but because of the authority of the he or she possesses, it can stop an 18-wheeler just by raising up his or her hand. Stop. That is the logic where the believer's authority came from. Now, we now use that logic to say, because you are a Christian, you are cultured in Christ, you can do like this to the demon, demonic world, and they will just respond to your command. That is antithetical to the scriptures. So that logic uh, took a quantum leap from against an explanation and infused it into the scriptures. But then what does the scripture say about the way we respond to demonic beings? Okay, because we must not because of truth not follow the scriptures. What does the scripture say in that regard? Jude, the book of Jude, is a book that was written or that it was written to address uh, 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 everything in the church. And it, the book, one chapter, addressed a whole lot of things. And one of the things the book addressed is the issue of how we relate with the demonic being. I will look at Jude, and then we'll look at Paul. So did the Bible say, does the Bible say that you can command, actually command spirits? We don't have that in our New Testament or even in our Bible. But Jude said something, Jude chapter 1 and verses, um, verses 8 and 9. He said, likewise also, these dreamers, who do they call dreamers? The book of Jude is written to expose falsehoods that was in the church and to also contend for the faith, which is present to us the right way, which is the faith that was once and for all delivered to us. So he called these first leaders, these first preachers, he called them dreamers. Why does he call them dreamers? He calls them dreamers because the things they do is coming from their imagination, just like against explanation of authority, using police man who is in uniform. So Jude said, likewise also these dreamers defy the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. That word dignitary is there. If, if, you use the, if you use Peter's version, Second Peter chapter 2 of this thing, he called, him, he called that dignitary angels, fallen angels. Right? So Jude is saying that these dreamers, these people who, who, who speak evil of dignitaries, who speak to angels, he called these false teachers who are conjoining what they are practicing. It's not as the it's not according to the authority of the scripture, but it's according to their own subjective reasoning. And I said, yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dare not bring against him a revealing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Now, this is Michael, the strongest of all the angels. This part Jude quoted is, is called pseudopigrapha. This part is not in our Bible, but it's an assumption, it's a, an oral tradition carried by the Jew, by Israel, that when Moses died, nobody knew where he was buried. And the assumption was Satan was contending with his body so that they can know. Because if they know where Moses was buried, they would have turned it to a shrine, like Kodimonade shrine, Babalola's shrine, and co. Do you understand? So there was a contention. Satan wanted the body of Moses to be reviewed. And Michael and Satan fought. And when Michael came, Michael didn't even say, Satan, I cast you. He said, the Lord, the Lord will be killed. So what do we believers have? We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. You have no business with demon. You can If you notice in the prayer meeting, Baba has been praying. I've studied, I've noticed it for like four or five times. He always quotes Joshua the high priest as the Lord rebuke. It, it's there in the Old Testament. Baba always quotes it. In the Old Testament, the Lord rebuke. We that's, that's Zachariah, Zachariah 3 1 2. It's in front of me, just mm -hmm. like he said. Uh -huh. Go ahead, sir. Let me let me prepare for the second one, which is a pause version on how to deal with demons. Go ahead, sir. The, he said the angel showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. 
the accuser Satan, this is the head of the demon soul, <laughs> was there at angel's right hand, making accusation against Joshua. And the Lord said to Satan, I, the Lord, rejects your accusation. That is in LLT. In uh, a new King Jesus, said, the Lord rebukes you, Satan. So there is no way. I, I, actually, if we, we study the book of Ephesians together, I mean, in Ephesians 12, I mean, Ephesians uh, 6, from 12 downwards. In fact, if you read, if you listen to what uh, verse 11 said in that Ephesians, Chapter six, he, what is told you to do as a believer? Uh, let me just read it so that we, we, we understand what is. So what is, to, I think from verse 10, really, what he told us to do as believer is that he said, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. So how do you do that? Mm -hmm. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. And then you go from 14, uh, or oh, yeah, from 14, it's a stand there for having fasted. This, look, if you look at those uh, uh, demons in uh, verse 12 of uh, that efficient, they are the highest. You don't, have, you, don't have, you don't have them better than that. And what is asking us to do is to fasten on the bed, uh, fasten on the bed of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. That's not an as the shoe, as a, a shoe for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace, cleansing gospel, <laughs> the gospel of peace in, in all circumstances, take off the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming that, uh, that of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So, you see, you see, this, all these things is. You should, no Christian should be involved in spiritism. No, no Christian should be involved in spiritism. You do that, you are going, to, if that one is going to regret it. So the best thing, you look at the weapon that way. So all those ones claiming that, oh, there was one that said that uh, he had some noise and uh, he looked and he saw it was Satan. And what is the color of Satan? <laughs> What is the color of Satan? What is the color of demon? You see, those things don't go into spiritism. You do that, you, you'll be in trouble, real you trouble. Yourself. You open yourself to what you are not ready for. So, yes. for Valentine, in this context, so someone is having demonic problem and you are invited into that place. Purely, that person needs something more than deliverance. That person needs the source. Because 2 Timothy 2, 2 Timothy 2, verses 24, 25, and 26 says, I want to use NLT. A servant of the Lord must not correct, but must be kind to everyone, be able to teach, and be patient with, with difficult people. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts, and they will learn the truth. Then they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap. For they have been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. The person who is held captive by Satan to do Satan bidding, what does he need? Deliverance. He needs God. Because that person is not a problem with Satan. It's a problem with God. And it's not even guaranteed. He says, gently instruct them, give them the truth, perhaps. They will come to their senses and escape Satan's trap. So, in, the, in this context, when someone is disturbed by a demon and a believer is in, in, invited to pray, you pray in the name of God, pray in the name of Jesus, pray that that person, pray that that person will be delivered, pray that that person will be delivered in the name of Jesus. But Jesus said, if an evil spirit leaves someone, it goes back, it goes away. The will spirit to come back, and when it comes back, and he find that the heart is empty. That heart is mm. empty. You know why that heart is empty? Because the, the real thing has not happened. The real mm -hmm. thing has not happened. What is going what to happen? The, the devil will come out with seven deadly demons, which means it's not, it's, it's not necessary to waste our time on what is oh. antithetical. The well, strongest deliverance is Colossians 1.13. He has made us to cross from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. To that of light. 
Mm -hmm. that, is, that is the strongest that defense. Is. So the person who demo is disturbing, his problem is our problem is not casting that demo. It's a, that problem is that heart is empty and that heart needs Christ. And that is the strongest deliverance. And, and, uh, and uh, before, you go, before you go, sir, you remember that uh, Mark 11 you are talking about, which mm -hmm. I, don't know, I don't know which of the men uses it and they said that you can uh, uh, you can use it to command nothing. Look, there are there are um, prophecies about Jesus that he alone, he alone would do. No other person can do it. And I'll give you an example. The example is in the, uh, because I will, you know, I discussed it last week. It's in uh, Mark chapter eight, when Jesus went to Peter's mother-in-law's house and healed him of fever. And the next verses that follow that, uh, I think is uh, 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 Matthew 8, 14. So now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mo uh, mother lying sick with a fever. So he, he touched her and the fever left her and she arose and served them. 16, now said, so when the evening had come, they brought to him many who had demon possessed and he cast out the spirit with a word and healed all those who are sick. That, listen to this particular one, that it may be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet said, he himself took our infirmity and bore our sicknesses. That prophecy was about Christ, not about you. Mm -hmm. Not about, it was about Christ. Because Matthew who wrote this thing knew what it was right. In fact, between me and Matthew, Matthew knew the scripture more than I can ever know it. So it is dangerous for anybody, dangerous for anybody to want to cast out demon, going there and saying, I'm going to cast out demon, whatever. Look, when it's... Oh, it yes. yes. Sorry to cut in here. No, what no, you no, are saying, ahead. if you look at the, because we're talking about casting now, this act of apostle chapter 16, where Paul yes. spoke to the lady, the girl that was disturbing them, troubling them. Yes. And the Bible says, I think it Acts, Acts 16, 17. Yes. Mm -hmm. said, but, so let me read from 17. The girl followed Paul, Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this mm -hmm. she did for many days. Paul, but Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. To come out of the and he came out that very hour. Whose authority? Him or Jesus? Uh, the, not, it's, not, it's, it doesn't have any power. Mm -hmm. It's, using it's power. Jesus. So that was the same thing uh, Jude said, the same thing Zechariah Babakote said. Yeah, we pray in the name of Jesus, but we, we don't have that authority. And did, he, did, did Paul do any drama? Did he focus on the drama? Is there any paparazzi here? Spoke in the name of Jesus. And he moved how many on. how many days did he did, did he discover that that spirit was not speaking? It was not of God. How many days? You read it. He was following them many days. Yes. Before he found out, hang on. Because that is when the the spirit. You see, those apostles they didn't do anything on their own. Let me tell you that. Yeah, but they what I'm it. saying is, he he was exercising just like Brother Valentine was asking. He. Uh, Paul here was exercising the authority. Mm -mm. You know, there's no authority. authority. No, no. <laughs> but as you know, Paul is an apostle. We are all, all of us are God's children, right? Okay. Here, we have never said that we can't pray in the name of Jesus. Clear is that that you have words that can send demon at will. We don't. We okay. Christians don't have the authority, but we can pray in the name of Jesus. Say okay. you rent a house that has been used by an occultic person before you move to that house or you bought a property and you find some fetish implants there you come on you pray in the name of jesus do you understand we so the don't get it like don't look at what we are saying like um there's no power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus but the believer does not have business in your own authority by your words i oh. am going to do a deliverance service hi oh. i'm going to cast it out hi 
So the, the demons will respect me. They can't respect you. Who are we? Yeah. But we come in the name of Jesus. We come in the authority of Jesus. Okay. Yeah. So there's no but believer's authority. No, it's from against book. Okay. Uh, and that against book, I have to do the philosophy behind it. Yeah. Actually, you need to look at uh, Acts chapter 19 again. The seven sons of scribes. Hmm. Look at the same authority, or the, or the this is authority of Christ is using. <laughs> Paul used that. They wanted to use that. Uh, look, he saw them empty that there was nothing in them. That the spirit of God is not living in them. So, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? So yes. you need to you need to really understand that. You can only do this thing in the name, and that is when you know. But please don't go into spiritism, please. So it's, spiritism, what Baba is saying about spiritism is that it's beyond that name. There are techniques, there are mo there are procedures, there are techniques. So that against uh, seduction is more than that. So okay. that's just chapter one introduction. As you go deeper, you will go into techniques, you will go into methods of how to uh, use that authority. You are going to divination. What technique did Paul use here? Nothing. Apart from that name. Yeah. None. No technique. You are still going to lay in of hand as you continue in that book. You are going to can say a lot of those techniques, like for those people who went to Wolfby, I went to Wolfby in those Wolf? days. Yeah, that's a and, uh, of the Bible Institute. Yes, oh, okay. Wolfby. And uh, one, one of the one of the, the topics there was on New Testament ministrations, whereby you use the blood, you use uh, you see, you I use agree. oil, you use all those things. Um, years after, when I went through those things, that they, they fizzled out of me. They fizzled out of me. It was exciting when you you did one or two of those uh, <laughs> of those things. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it works so don't think that it doesn't yeah, work. Yeah. It works yes. so, but as believers, it works. It works. It, work. it, 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 work. it works. But with time, if Wow, well, we're gonna turn your network even when you're back. Uh, uh, Reverend Tang, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, hold on. Your network is uh dragging when it's back. We, there's someone it's who has, unstable, it's unstable. We will get back to you. Sister Francisca said, What about Luke 10, where Jesus sent his disciples out and they came back saying that the demons were subject to them? We have asked, answered that question. Did Jesus send you? Were you there? And when they came back, what did Jesus say? Rejoice not because you did that, but that your names are written in the book of life. True? Then thirdly, was Judas not there? Where did he end? Where did Judas end? Jesus actually sent them out and he gave them that authority. And did he send you? Were you there? It was numbered 70. First of all, 12, then 70. Are you have found the 70? <laughs> Today, if you have a problem, if anything is disturbing you, number one, the true child of God, they know. Have you forgotten the book of Job? Satan said to God, are you not the one that is protecting Job? Did Job know that he was protected? A true child of God is heavily protected. Well, perhaps there are reasons why you think something spiritual is happening around you, not inside you. You are a child of God. You will pray. And God will answer prayers. Okay, next, next person, please. Any other? Any other question? Anywhere, any question, any on any hangu. Okay, Sister Francisca, go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. 
My question is, okay, still on Joshua 10, 6, where we read that as uh, Joshua commanded the son to stop and it has never happened again. And um, we implied, or we have, we, we've said before that you cannot put your name in the scripture. You cannot find when you are reading, you don't try to find your name there. What I'm trying to ask, I don't know if uh, I will be clear with my question is, if you cannot find your name, I mean, if you cannot read the Bible and pray along with that as regards your situation, as regards your whatever you are going through, what about applications that we make when we study the Bible and we say, how does it apply to us? And we, we, we draw applications, we draw lessons from that, and we use that to guide our our, our ways. For instance, if I read Psalm 27, which says the Lord is my light and my salvation, the Lord is my stronghold, uh, the strength of my life. Am I not supposed to pray along with David? I know it's David that wrote it and he was praying to God. Can't I do the same? And, and, and um, I will not say confess now, I'll get into trouble. I mean, <laughs> can't I say along with David? No, yes, my dear, I'm alive my dear, and I'm my dear, my dear, when you are praying and you now say, oh, Father, uh, your name is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Father, you know, you can say I run into it. You can say that, but you see, you have to be very, very careful with so many other things. Just like your your uh, your Psalm twenty seven, there's nothing wrong in you uh, picking scriptures to pray. For example, we have read today uh, about uh, Lord, you know, okay, like the fellow who said, "I don't have enough faith. Have my faith." You see, he's saying that even uh, Lord, as I'm faithless, I know that you are faithful. Let your knowledge, let light come into me so that I will understand. If you don't understand, if you don't understand God, you can't even have faith in His word. You need to understand Him so that you can have faith in His word. So, because the Bible says we are faithless. About this, so I don't know anything. So, just help me. Things, so, you, but you cannot just be claiming and, you know, shaming. That's so, the. So, so, Star Francisca, thank you, Sir Baba. Are you, did you ask that question because of Mark 10? Or Mark 10 is solved already? Mark 11, because Mark 11, not 10. If she could have, uh, yeah, don't, Luke, no, Luke this 10. is something different. Okay, I want to be clear so that uh, it's not in connection with Luke 10. So, no, 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 not demon casting and no, no demon generally. casting. Okay, generally, that if you if you read the by the word of God and uh, it bring it like the psalm you have quoted, that um, can't we pray in that line? But you are careful not to use the word confession. What about declaring? Can't we mm -hmm. declare based on that scriptures? No, we have we've been taught that is supplication by no, 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 no. supplication. Okay, okay. So, so there are many responses, like you're saying about application. There are many responses to the scriptures. Unfortunately, what the looking at the scriptures and confessing it, let me use that word, confessing it, yeah. is a technique that we were taught in WOF, word of it. So when you look at, um, I am the temple of God. No, don't you know that the, your body is the temple of God? You go to 1 Corinthians 6. Don't you know that? So you will be saying to yourself, I am the temple of God. I am the temple of God. By that confession, that word will become real to you. And you'll be walking in the consciousness of you being the temple of God. It looks good. But that is called mantra. That came from Hindu belief of yeah. Hindu definition of meditation. So in the book of Joshua, Joshua 1, 9, meditate upon this word, right? Meditate upon the book of the law. So that word meditate 
if you go to the dictionary, go to the go, go to Google, it means to mutter or to murmur or to speak to yourself. So you will pick a word and speak it to yourself and speak it to yourself until that word penetrates your subconscious. And you start believing that word more than what you are saying, and it will have a new reality experience. And how do we dispel that? The man who God said that to is Joshua. But we have read Joshua to chapter 10. At what point did Joshua sit down to murmur on a word? So if the Lord told him to meditate, we should see how he's meditating in it. We should see it. But there's no place in the entire chap 24 chapters that Joshua's definition of meditation is in line with the Hindu definition of meditation. So what they have taught, what they did is that because meditation is in the Bible, they took it out, but gave it an Hindu the explanation. But we Christians, we use the Bible to explain the Bible. So when we go into that, into that Joshua one night, they want to see how did Joshua actually meditate? Because where they are going is that when you use that word repeatedly, you are going to have a spiritual experience. How did Joshua have a spiritual experience in Joshua chapter five on the Holy Land? When uh, a, a pre-incarnate Jesus appeared to him, was he meditating or it just happened? Joshua 5. He was just going. He did not use any technique to pull Jesus down or to pull God down to show him a vision. God interrupted him and showed him when he wanted to. So therefore, that first of all dispels that, uh, that lie. Now, there are many responses to the scriptures. There are times you read the scriptures, it leads you to pray. Correct response. There are times you read the scripture, it leads you to obey. Thou shall not commit adultery. What do you do to that? You obey. Thou shall not steal. What is the response? Don't steal. Thou shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. What is the response? Don't bear false witness against your neighbor. We read 1 John 5, 13 today. I write this that you may know present possession, present position, that you have eternal life, present possession. What do you do with that? You keep. That's a promise. You keep. And so how do I know I have eternal life? So 1 John 13, 5, 13 says, I have eternal life. So I'll be saying it to myself. Oh, I have eternal life. So which means it is the power of my words that infuse eternal life into my spirit. We have moved from Christianity into Hinduism. Hinduism. This is what we are Christians. So how does that 1 John 5, 13 work for me? I'm thanking God and I keep that promise. I remember that promise. When life and circumstance. Today I spoke about assay, covenanted love. Thank God. Our salvation is based on covenanted love, not contractual love. Because if it's contractual love, we are going to lose it. But when you fall and fail, and you are thinking you have lost it, you remember the promise. This I have written, that you may know that you have eternal life. You keep, you don't repeat it. It's not your words that give power to 1 John 5, 13. It's powerful on its own. Your, our job is to remember Psalm 103, verses 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul. I know that is within, that is within me, bless his holy name, and forget not all his benefits. Forget not. It's not repeating. It's keep studying Bible. So that's another response to the Bible. Either you keep, promise to keep, commandment to obey, one is to avoid. So I don't know where we got this response to the scripture is you pick it out and say it to God. So when you now say it to God, uh, Philippians 4.19, uh, God shall supply all my needs according to his riches. God said, he will supply all my needs. I can tell you now, repeat it. Remember, <laughs> he's taking Christian concept and giving it another religion's jacket. We use Bible to interpret Bible. So, Sister Francisca, yes, one of the response to the scripture is we pray. Another response to the scripture is we obey. Another response to the scripture is we keep. Another response to the scripture is that we avoid warnings. Is that clear, ma'am? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Another question. Anywhere. Okay. Hi. It's not a question. Go this ahead, is Sister Caroline. Sister Caroline. Uh, good, morning. good morning, everybody. So uh this, you know, this teaching today is just reminding me, you know, that the Holy Spirit make it touch fresh short for rod with groaning that you know mark cannot even alter 
uh, I'm linking it with, uh, you know, taking a verse out and repeating it over and over, over and over. I would confess that I'm guilty of it. Even now that I say I've known Christ, I thank God for this teaching because, you know, uh, everyday teaching teach us something that we hold on to as believers. I am very guilty of it because I never saw it like that. I never knew it like that because that is the teaching we have learned that. Mm -hmm. If you are asking God for something, if you are praying, you have to have something. You are asking God as you are going on the road, even when you are driving, you keep repeating it within your heart. Uh, you know, um, I'm grateful for this teaching. That's what I want to say. So, so Takaro, what happened is that when we become born again, we have a brand new spirit. The spirit of God does a work in our spirit that we cannot explain. That is miraculous. But we are not dying. We did it. Well, as soon as that miracle happens, we didn't die. As soon as that miracle happened, we did not die instantly. It would have been very good if as soon as we become born again, like the man on the tree with Jesus, you just go. But since we are still here, we have a whole lot of sanctification to go through, a whole lot of uh, washing and cleansing to go through. Jesus said in John 17, 17, sanctify them, sanctify them by your word, for your word is truth. That is that sanctification is what we are going to keep going through till we see Jesus face to face. Here on it, one stone, one upon a time, at a time, as you hear the word of God, you repent. You, you are repenting because first of all, the first miracle has happened in you. I spoke with someone yesterday, two days ago, who I explained this same thing to, but it did not come to your conclusion. It's still adamant that that is the way to go because the first miracle has not happened. When that first miracle has happened, it becomes easy for us to accept the scripture truth. It becomes easy for us to please God. Sister Caro, what you have spoken about now, that you pick a scripture and you out of you knock it out of the scripture and you meditate, it's called Latino Davina. It's another mm -hmm. method that is coming from outside and they inserted into our scriptures, into our Christian practice. It's called Lactino Davina. Let me tell you five stages of Lactino Davina. Then you will see what you have been practicing. Most of us will do it. Select a scripture passage upon which to reflect. That is step one. Step two, read the passage preferably out loud two or three times. So read the passage over and over. Step three, meditate on the word or phrase that stood out to you, to you, to you. No part of the scripture. Second Timothy, second Peter chapter one, verses 19 is of any private interpretation. But this one is to you. Meditate on that word over and over. Then you create a God experience. Respond to God who has been speaking to you. Still yourself, still, still yourself and rest in the loving embrace of your maker. See, it looks like Christian. This is Latino Davina, developed by the Christian Catholic monks. It's a way of getting into spiritism. But they're not using they're not using Ouija board. They're not using Okeleifa or Odufa. They're using the scriptures. They're not using Amadeus shrine, right? Scriptures. It's a way of entering into spiritual experience. So let me explain it. You sit down, you pick the scriptures. Um, you shall know the truth. You pick it out. John 14, you shall know the truth, just the truth. You repeat the truth, the truth, the truth until your mind is blank. Then you enter into another realm. Then you start knowing things you did not learn and you learn things you did not know. And things begin to tell you about truth, ramification of truth, concept of truth, dimension of truth, depth of truth, truth in reality, truth personified, up truth, down truth, middle truth, right truth, left truth. So many things about truth begin to show up. In the process, you see God, you see Jesus, you embrace him. This skin can go for hours in your meditation. Brothers and sisters, is that Christianity? Because the truth there is not a ramification and dimension of truth. It's specific about the truth of Christ. But you have taken, forget the Christ. You, have, you, have, you just speak one word to get into a mystical experience. Let's dispel it. First Timothy chapter 6. And in the process, you see God. That's the Latino Davina. Respond to God. So in your let, imagination. Let, let them know that the God they are seeing is not the God that ah, created yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. So in your imagination, because you use the scripture, you brought Jesus down from the right hand of the majesty, isn't it? 
in your imagination because you use scriptures. You brought Jesus down from the right hand of majesty. So your mind brought Jesus to your room. In your mind, you began to embrace Jesus. You are hugging that Jesus. You are having fellowship with that Jesus and that Jesus is telling you things. So your mind brought him down from the right hand of majesty. Second, First Timothy chapter six, verses 14. That you keep his commandment without spot, blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and the only and the only potentate, the king of kings and lord of lords, who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see. See. <laughs> the whom be honor and everlasting power. No man has seen or can see. See. But Lactio Davina brings him to your room. That means it's not Jesus. That's demon. Sorry, which chapter did you read? First Timothy okay. chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. 6 and verses 15 and 14. 15 says, he will appear in his own time. Not because I put, I draw him with my imagination. The end goal of Lactio Davina is to have an experience with Jesus. And truly, was, there's a guy called Lawrence Oyo in Lagos right now. He tells young people to imagine Jesus and truly he will come. He will start hugging them and they will start crying. But the scripture says he will manifest in his own time. <laughs> but someone can call him through their whole imagination. The scripture also says he dwells in an unapproachable light. No man has seen or can see. And Lactio Davina says you can draw him down with your imagination. See, they took... This thing sounds Christian. Meditate, isn't it? The same Paul says meditate, isn't it? Second Timothy chapter two, verses um, verses seven. Paul says to Timothy, "Consider what I said, and may the Lord give you understanding." That word "consider" means contemplate, meditate. So Paul said it: contemplate, meditate, think, consider. The same Paul said so. So you just took, you just take that contemplate, take it out, and infuse mystical definition into it. So we must know what is the way out. We must know our Bible. So when we say Bible is, this, is sufficient for all practice in Christianity, is that everything we call spirituality must pass the Bible test or else somebody is lying. Sister Carol, this is washing time. We are all going to washing of the word of God. I, I thank God for it because that brings me to a conversation I was having with one of the sister three days ago, we used to be in the same ministry. So she left before me. Then sometimes she does call me, we talk. Then there was something she told me three days ago. She said she went to the store and uh, a woman came after her and the woman is talking, talking, talking. You know, somebody who has like mental issue, I would say, but she did say the way she was telling me, I conclude that somebody that has like mental illness. And she said, oh, immediately she turned around. The Holy Spirit said, this is a demon. This is a demon. Pray, 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 pray. Cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. I said, ah. she's old enough to be my mom. I said, mama. I said, this is you. I say, I don't agree with it too. I don't believe that Jesus will tell you that this is a demon. A human being, I think that person is sick. He said, no, Sister Caroline. Immediately I started pray. I'm calling Jesus. You know, loud. I was it. He just moved away. I said, probably you were disturbing her. <laughs> and she did not agree with me. You know, it baffled me. I said, I'm not trying to tell you that I know more. But with the level of where we should be, we are not even supposed to play with the blood of Jesus. He said, no, 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 no. I still play with the blood of Jesus. So mm. I was just really so, you know, a little awkward. But she was not understanding what I was saying. And I, I felt so horrible. I said, this is the person we were in the cup together, in, in, a, in, a, in a shrine together. She has come out, but still. Let me so just, just change far. shrine. Maybe she just change the shrine. She moved to another shrine. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So that's any other it. question? Any other comment? Thank you, Stakaro. Now you've seen that um, we are going through washing. I think God's wisdom just allowed us to pause in these few two weeks because a lot of us are going through washing. You know, and, uh, this, that they has, need to understand uh, with the blood of that blood of Jesus. They need to understand we are the yank it out as well. Mm. 
because they just yank it out. And if you if you read that thing in uh, Revelation 12, 11, you will see what it says. It said they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. What does that mean? We always overcome. We overcome the evil, uh, you know, uh, the, the evils. Not that the evil that we say, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. No, 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 no. The blood has been shed. And we over, it, it, it translated us from the kingdom of that darkness. Because the blood is just for our sin. Mm. It's just for our sin. So without, blood, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So what he's saying is that all those things that we overcame, is the, we overcame the life of sin. By, in fact, he was talking particularly about some people here. And just like our sister, uh, sister Francisca said that in application, yes, we are already, over, we are anyone that is in Christ already overcame that evil thing by the lamb. Not that, oh, I cover myself, I grow myself, I drink the blood of Jesus. No. No, no. It's, it's all those, it's part of those mystical approach to the scriptures. Someone came to uh, the last week, Saturday's teaching, he's a pastor in Lagos. He said, yes, the, the Bible has two meanings. Hmm. This one we are studying the book of Joshua line by line. It's one meaning, and that is low. The other meaning is the depth that you get out of it when you study it. The thing will just jump at you. That is beyond the lie, beyond the chapter, beyond the Bible. That is Lactio Davina. And I allowed him to talk. And I asked him a question. How will you now yank a verse out? I will not contradict the same Bible that says no part of the Bible is subject to private interpretation. He said, no, he's not yanking out the interpretation. He's yanking out the application. <laughs> <laughs> What application? They overcame by the blood of the Lamb. What's the application? Rejoice because you have overcome. That's the application. Yes. That's the application. Rejoice. It's been done. Don't deal. That's the application. What application again? That shall not key. They don't key someone. That's the application. Or what does it mean to you, brother? That shall not key. Do you have another meaning? Maybe something is deeper. That shall not key. They don't key. Honor your father and your mother. They honor them. That's the application. But you know, that's lactio davina. Uh, if you are a Christian and you know the truth, if you are in the, if you are a Christian, you may not know. But the day you know the truth, you will turn. Jesus says something in John chapter five, verse seventeen. John chapter five, John chapter seven, verse seventeen. Jesus says something. Mm -hmm. The things Jesus did and taught, the Pharisees did not get. So what was Jesus' answer to them? John 7, 17. Jesus said, verse 16 says, Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but he who sent me. If anyone will do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine. So we may not know. We won't even know everything when we become born again. But if you want to do the will of God, you will know. And the day you will know, you will not question. You will not argue. You will just submit. I'm sorry, Lord, for giving my sins. Mm -hmm. You know, this visualization and uh, point of contact, I shared it with someone this week after this, our last program. You know what our response was? Lord, I repent because she has something in our wardrobe that she has been looking at that, that she bought 2016. Since 2016. As soon as she saw the truth, she repented and she prayed to God for forgiveness and she took the thing away. That is somebody who wants to do the will of God. You may not know, and you are a Christian right here. But the day you will know, you will not say, where? It is John that wrote the book of John, not Jesus. I go by the words of Jesus. <laughs> or that's Paul's idea. Or that was the culture of that time. You see how people excuse the clear instruction, clear, clear teachings of the scriptures. We may not know, all of us, at one point, we've all meditated, we've all done Lactio Davina, we've all done visualization. All, but the day Jesus said, if anyone, anyone which is open, That's good. we do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine. 
you will know. It's not about going to Bible school or having a degree. Is no, no, no. do you want to do the will of God? You will not be lost if you want to do His will. Any other question, please? Any other question? I just love the word. <laughs> I love the word lack to the Yes, I think <laughs> lecture divina. Uh -huh. I think the, the, there are so many infiltrations which came and and there are some Christian authors that promoted it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, in uh, personally, in my quest to, to go deeper, I went into all those things and uh, people like Richard Foster and all those type Foster, of things. Mm -hmm. the, the, the celebration of discipline celebration of and discipline. all those things. Um, Agnes yeah. and Mary, Mary, uh, Mary Baker, Agnes yeah. Stafford. Yeah. Uh -huh. All of you have money, so you have been buying books. <laughs> I don't have money to buy books, so I won't. John, I don't pay uh, Madam, Madam Guillaume, uh -huh. and a lot of these Catholic, Catholic uh, mystics and all whatnot. Then even even the Pentecostal charismatics people like Young Cho that was talking about the fourth, mm -hmm. fourth dimension, fourth dimension, the fourth dimension. Yes, so. Um, uh, truly speaking, finding this group has uh, has helped me out because I was trying to weed out those things from my life, and uh, mm. it, it's 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 really exciting now, and and I thank God for it. Thanks be to God. I, Thanks be to God. You, you, you said, you said, really you said Christian leaders. I think uh, oh, sorry. you said something. Uh, uh, but Valentine said something which all of us should pay attention to. He said Christian leaders endorse those things. And that's why we have to be different here. The fact yeah. that Christian leaders endorse something doesn't, and that is contrary to the scriptures, doesn't make it true. true. Is it true, Baba? It doesn't. Yeah. No, no, no. It's contrary. No, but what if it's a popular, for example, now, NHA has 100,000 with that church. How can you say someone like NHA who is practicing Shakti Pat? Slaying people under the anointing. How can that be wrong? Is, it, is that the one that is sleeping over prayer requests? Yes. Uh, rolling over prayer requests. Yeah. They are just, you see, anything. In fact, <laughs> <laughs> you see, believe me, I have some guiding uh, uh, verses in the Bible. Uh, First, First Corinthians fifteen nineteen says, "If we who believe hmm, that our hope is in this world, go and look at every every single every single first teachers, all they will promote, all they will promote is physical thing, nothing tangible, and that is why you see all those ones, even those ones that are going to spiritism, everything is you see that earth." Uh, husband, wife, children, car. Just think of anything that you will live in this world. You will never, it will never go to heaven with you. That is, if you, if you are going, those things will never go. Those are the things that occupy the. In fact, I love the way Jesus put it in uh, Matthew six thirty two. Said those are the things that pervade the mind of unbelievers. Mm -hmm. So anybody, anybody who's Whose mind is going to that one? Oh, if you pray, if you do first fruit, you are going to be rich. It's a non-believer. I did it. And your mind is pervaded. You see, I don't even know the young Cho, all those ones you are talking about. <laughs> all I, I don't buy buy I don't buy books. Mm. <laughs> I'm just look at the verse that our brother brought out. John wow, 717. 7, 7, 7, 7. That is is enough. For anyone to look at, so my doctrine is not mine, mm -hmm. but he who has sent me. Now, what is that doctrine? He said, if anyone, he didn't say if Christian, if anyone wills to do his will, anyone who wants to do the will of God, he shall know concerning the doctrine. You know why? 
because uh, uh, first, uh, first Peter, know, second Peter one nineteen twenty. Which one is he looking for? Second okay, Peter okay. one nineteen. All right. Bible interpretation. So, you see, the the in in Jeremiah, God said, "I will put my laws, which is the commandment, into their hearts." And First John five three says that His commandments are not grievous. You know why? Because in the commandment we meet with the word of God, <laughs> and you will know, you will know. Nothing, nothing with this. Look, the gospel is very simple. Is it not uh, Paul who wrote that from the youth, Timothy, as understood, isn't it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So a youth can understand it. Uh, what, if you look at uh, Romans chapter one, what is he talking about? So everything is not. It's not saying that you you have to bring the thing from heaven. He said, for whatever can be known about God is plain to them, because God has showed it to them. For His invisible attributes, namely His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse, yes. all of us. So if you like, we can go down the lane of uh, spiritism, but I can tell you that it, it, will, it, will, it, will, it will hurt you more than you can ever think of. It will take away everything because those people seek for power, mm. power of recognition. When I cast out like this, they turn glass. You know, when I do this, and you see that you live the real thing, and you become focusing on the intangible. Mm -hmm. and, what, and what does the what does Satan wants? He wants you to do that, to take away your focus from God, something that is intangible. So that is why when they want to uh, introduce some uh, uh, some people, if you don't say, "Ah, it's doctor, prophet." Uh, I chief, they will not stand up until you tell them what they were, what it is, and what it is. God bless us all. Thank you, sir. So, um, right. solution we shouldn't allow we, the Bible should be a standalone. But I mm -hmm. said something that the reason why the Christian community were sucked in into sorry, this. Sorry, sorry, brother Paul. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right, right. That's 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 John 17. John 17. Uh, John 7. Go and look at 18. He said, he will speak for himself. Does mm -hmm. what? <laughs> seek his own glory. But he will seek the glory of the one who sent him is true. And no righteousness is in him. Amen. Self. When, yes, when I, for 18 years, I did not wear shoe. Look <laughs> at me now. <laughs> <laughs> look at me now. Mm -hmm. I'm... I'm riding on the jet. I'm doing this. Yes, sir. Watch out, all. all right. So we should do the Bible should be a standalone, no matter who is saying that practice. But at time, that was why the Christian community were sucked in. Because prior before now, the Christian community have these hero worshiping, cut like personality pastors. That when a big, a big man of God comes in town and he brings a doctrine, it, it surprises. Yeah. When Young Gicho brought his fourth dimension, all of us bought the book because it's Young Gicho, the, the biggest church in the world. How can it be wrong? It's Young Gicho. But what is that fourth dimension? He was using uh it was using mystical and physics, metaphysical approach, then he took a quantum leap into occultism. So he divided it into a line, a plane, a cube, and a fourth dimension. The line is a line, one line. You draw one line like this. So the line is one. A plane is two. So in the plane, there are two lines. So one is in two, two is in one. Then you draw a cube. Cube is three. So three is in two, two is in three, three is in one, one is in three. Then you took a quantum leap to four. So God is in the fourth dimension. So nature, environment is in God, and God is in the environment. So, and God made you in his own image. So you two are in the fourth dimension. You are spirit and you are soul, and you are spirit and you are body. So you are in environment, environment is in you. So how did God make heaven and earth? His spirit arch over reality, like hen incubate on egg. 
and the egg takes a new form and turns to a chicken. That was how God made heaven and earth. So you and he did that through visualization and meditation. So you too can sit down in your room and incubate over a thought. And that thought will have an independent action and that action will become a reality. So he said, give me a desert and in six months, I'll have a 10,000 member church because we too wanted to have that kind of large successful church. We thought that principle was true. Or not to us that what it means is that, what it meant was that he's going to sit down in the desert and visualize crowd coming. It's what energy practice. Winners, the ask bishop, what do you do with your time? He said, I read and I think. He quoted that word, I meditate. I read and I think. You are going to go into a desert and meditate. Imagine the crowd coming, not praying. Imagine they are coming. They are seated. Imagine they pack their cars. Imagine they are well-dressed. Imagine everything you want to see. It will take you days to get to that point. And when you stop your imagination, all the things you have imagined, we start having independent action. The crowds will be coming. The cars will, the cars will be coming. It's called visualization, the strongest technique of occult. But it's coming from a man of God, isn't it? So God is in things, everything is in God. But Baba told us last week, the moment you believed what young Cho have said, that means God is not holy. Because God is holy, holy, holy. He's separate from his creation. God made heaven and earth in six days, and on the seventh day, God rested. He was not doing anything, and heaven and earth was still going because the God is God of the creation is outside of his creation. But this visualization and meditation technique says God is in everything, and everything is in God. That means sin is in God. And if sin is in God, then Christ cannot be sinless. And if Christ is not sinless, then he cannot atone for us. See where that is going. It's destroying our salvation. You see where it's going? Let's get back to the Bible. And if you are practicing some of, some of these things one, in one way or the other, if you will do his will, you will know of the doctrine. Thank you all for showing up today. And uh, we'll, meet, we'll continue.